Hi, Ninja Nerds. In this video, we're going to talk about central venous catheters. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. Don't forget to check out our Instagram and Facebook. Let's get started. All right. So central venous catheters, what are they? They are a catheter that we insert into a large vein. Okay. And when we say central, central just means closer to the heart. So we're going to put in this large catheter or a large um, a catheter in a large vein that's really close to our heart. So first, let's talk about what is the biggest vein that we have in our body. Do you guys remember? We have the heart right here. So what is this vein that's coming from the top of the body and this vein that's coming from the bottom of the body that's returning blood back to the heart? This is our inferior vena cava, right? It's returning blood from the bottom of our body, from our legs, our abdomen, back to the heart. And then from here, we have our what? Our superior vena cava, right here, right? That's returning blood back to our heart. So our superior vena cava and our inferior vena cava, the biggest vein that's returning blood back to our heart. So I have them written here, our superior and inferior vena cava. And this is where we're going to place our central venous catheter, or this um, catheter that is placed in the biggest veins that are closest to our heart. So we have superior vena cava and we have two places that we can insert this, right? We have the subclavian or the internal jugular. Okay, so if you look here, right, we have the superior vena cava, and that's from the subclavian, which is right here, and here's our point of insertion, and then the catheter comes down. And we also have this right here, which breaks off into two different branches of the jugular, and we usually want to put that into the internal jugular. Okay, so we have subclavian internal jugular. Those are two spots that it can be inserted. We also have one from the inferior where is a spot on our body that we can insert the inferior? Typically done in an emergent setting. Do you know? This would be the femoral. Okay. So femoral for the inferior and the superior gets the subclavian or the internal jugular. Okay. We call this, just to make sure in case you hear me say it later, IJ. So when we do insert the femoral, Remember, the femoral is typically done in a dirty setting or in the emergency room, so it's not done as sterile as we would like it. Just remember that if you are caring for a patient with a femoral, it needs to be changed within 24 hours. Okay. So, what is this again? A central venous, cath central venous catheter is a catheter that's placed into a large vein, typically the superior vena cava, which is subclavian or IJ, inter internal jugular, and then our IVC, which is in our femoral. But why are we putting this in our patient? Why are we putting in this central venous catheter, this sterile process, this long, drawn-out indication to put this into our body? Why aren't we just putting in a central IV or a peripheral IV and just saying, hey, we're done. We got this IV in their arm. We got this IV in their hand. They're good. Why, what are some indications, why are the reasons that we're going to put a central venous catheter into our patient? The first is medications, okay? One of them is our medications are going to be more diluted, okay, or have dilution. What does that mean? So we have medications that we can give patients that can cause irritation, okay, cause some phlebitis in um, hands or in the arm. So when we insert them into a larger vein, there's going to be more blood and therefore there's going to be more dilution. So it's going to cause less irritation for them. What's another reason we're going to put in a uh, central venous catheter for a patient? We see this right here. This catheter actually has two points that we can attach medications to and give them. So we can give them multiple medications. Okay, as long as they are compatible and they're able to be given, we can give them these multiple medications through one insertion site. Okay, and the last might be either due to a high volume, okay, which we're giving them a lot of medications and we need to make sure that we're giving to them in the correct volume and it's a little more intricate than it is just with a peripheral IV. 
What else? Why are we going to be putting in a central venous catheter for a patient? Typically, these patients might be a little more unstable. They're going to need a little more care. So we're going to look at unstable as hemo hemodynamically unstable, right? So we're going to want to give them fluids probably at a high volume, right? Which are going to be at a high pressure. And because of that, again, we're doing this into a large vein, right? Our inferior or superior vena cava where this pressure is going to have a large amount of pressure and this vein is bigger, it's going to be able to handle that bigger pressure. Another thing we can do is give them nutrition or a TPN. And this sometimes is due again for someone who is a little unstable. They don't have an access point yet for us to be giving them nutrition. So we're going to put in the temporary central venous catheter until they get surgery for us to be able to give them TPM and some type of peg tube. And the last thing we're going to do is temporary hemodialysis. So for any of you that know about hemodialysis or anyone that needs to get a, a graft for dialysis, those take a, a surgical a process. It takes a long time for them to um, adhere to each other because we're going to be creating a vein and an artery together, so they need a healing time. So for this patient, again, they're unstable. They may need temporary hemodialysis access. So we're going to be able to put in this central venous catheter, be able to dialysize them until they are able to be stable and have a, a graft that is now surgically healed and ready for use. So us as a nurse, there's reasons why we're going to be giving a patient a, a central venous catheter. There's going to be reasons um, that this is better than just having an IV. But now we are the nurse and we have this patient and we got to take care of them, right? So a couple things we need to look at when we are taking care of our patient that has a central venous catheter. The first thing is line patency. What does that mean? That means that the line is clear, it's flowing good, it's got a good return. So the first thing we're going to talk about is 10 milliliter flushes. We want to make sure that we're flushing this line, okay? Making sure that it's, it's clear and by policy per facility, they may even use some type, although they moved out of this, heparin flushes. They're mostly just doing saline flushes. What else are we going to be doing? You can be doing the push and pull method. When you do this, making sure that there is return, okay, that we have our blood return. And with that blood return, do not, do not pull blood cultures, okay? Do not pull your blood cultures from the central venous catheter. Why? Why aren't you pulling them from there? Well, there may be false positives, right? So you have this catheter. There may be a little infection here, okay? may not be, maybe, may not have a little infection here, okay, when we're pulling the blood, maybe an infection on that syringe that you're pulling it from, okay, and when you have a blood culture that you're pulling and you don't know where this infection is, you may be getting a false positive, and you don't want to assume that a p false positive on a blood culture here or on this saline is actually a false positive or a positive here, okay, because when we get a positive on a blood culture, we're going to assume that if you pulled it from the line, that it's here and this patient needs a whole new central catheter, okay, which is not going to be good. So we always want to do a nice clean stick when we do our blood cultures and do it in, in the way that we should be pulling our blood cultures, not from in the line that's already placed. So we're going to be flushing. We're going to not pull the blood cult cultures. We're going to make sure that it's, it's clean and clear, and we want to just make sure that there's no clots, right? So we're just going to make sure we're flushing through, making sure our patency is nice, good flow. With the dressing, we want to make sure that we have, what's our three big words with dressing as a nurse? That it's clean, it's dry, and it's intact, right? So if you have a dressing that is pulling up, pulling, there we go, up, right? You see a little lift on the side of it. It's pulling up over here. You want to make sure that you're changing that dressing so that there is no lift off of the skin. We also want to make sure that it's dry so there's no leakage or anything and it's clean around the area. There's no blood or anything. We also want to make sure that if there is any gauze underneath, sometimes when these are placed, it's bleeding a lot. So you'll put a piece of little gauze underneath that we change that as soon as possible. So that the, again, the dressing then is dry. So change it to make it dry. And lastly, we want to make sure that we're cleaning the area, keeping it clean. We want to be doing that with our CHG wipes, right? our chlorhexidine wipes. We want to make sure that we're cleaning off the, the arms correctly with this. We want to make sure we're also doing our 15-second scrub. 
making sure that underneath, sometimes when we put that gauze in when it's keeping it dry, we also have that microbial little patch in there that looks good. And we wanna make sure that we're also putting on those pressure caps. Okay, changing those out per policy. Okay, so we have care and maintenance of the line. We're able to make sure that it's flush, it's flowing great, it's all clean, it looks nice and pretty, it's, it's looking nice and sterile when we are doing it. Making sure the patient has a mask on this day and age with COVID, usually everyone has a mask on, make sure the patient's mouth is covered and they're turning to the left that when we are cleaning in that area, we are keeping it nice and sterile. And then all of a sudden you walk in the room and the patient has it pulled out or it's pulled out partially. Oh no, what are we gonna do? So the biggest thing with a dislodgement is you just wanna make sure if it is dislodged, remember this is a, an opening right here in the, the superior vena cave of the SVC. And because of that, there may be an air embolism, right? That might get trapped right up here in what is this? The right atrium, okay? So, Remember this in your head because it makes it a lot easier if you think, okay, air embolism, it might be in the right atrium. I want to keep it trapped there. I don't want to be pumping all these little air bubbles all over the body, all the way through all the different ventricles and atria of the heart. So it might be dislodged. Uh-oh, I'm scared for an air embolism. What am I going to be doing? I'm going to call quickly a rapid response or the healthcare provider, tell them, hey, it's coming out. In the meantime, while all this is happening, you're calling. You want to make sure you're putting on your occlusive dressing, right? We're covering up that hole. We're not letting any more air go in. We're not making a big air, air embolism any bigger than it already is. We're going to be putting on them on oxygen, preferably a non-rebreather, okay? Making sure that they're able to sustain 100%, okay? They're O2 sat, so they're not desatting for us. And it's in that right atrium, so which way air goes up, right? So if air goes up, we're going to turn them to their left so that this is facing up, and we're gonna have the left lateral transdellenberg. Okay, so put them in their left lateral transdellenberg position. You call the healthcare provider, you're checking their oxygen, they already have the occlusive dressing on, and you're gonna make sure you monitor their vital signs. Okay, making sure they're not going to kypnic, they're not having tachycardia, their oxygen's staying good, and their blood pressure is stable. If it is dislodged, and you did all this stuff, maybe the the central venous catheter had a chance, it was gonna come out maybe tomorrow, okay, we just lodged it a day early. Maybe we're gonna be able to, you know, sustain the patient and not have to put it back in or anything like that. If you have any medications that were running through the central venous catheter, just check with the healthcare provider. Can you put them peripherally? Do we even, can we switch them over to something that's better for them now that'll go through the peripheral line safely without harming the patient? But then you save the patient, you did a great job, you did everything you need to know because this dislodgement, I guarantee you out of all this stuff here on the NCLEX, this will be the thing. It's not the easy maintenance part, it's the uh-oh question they're gonna hit on. So keep this in mind. Putting on that occlusive dressing, making sure the non-rebreather is on, okay? All right, Ninja Nerds, in this video we covered central venous catheters. I hope it made sense. And as always, until next time.